was a young teenager, there was a live-action Disney movie uh, made in 1989 called Cheetah that I loved. It was about two kids visiting Africa for the summer where uh, their father was working at this uh, research station in the Great Rift Valley. They befriend a local Maasai boy and the three of them together find an orphan cheetah kitten and then raise her. It's, it's a very cute movie. Um, I think it's been largely forgotten. In, in 2005 there was another movie that came a lot with a very similar plot uh, titled uh, Duma. Uh, Duma is the Swahili word for cheetah and in both of these movies uh, actually the, the cheetah cub, uh, kitten, is given Duma as an individual, uh, as a name. I don't know if Warner Brothers and the other companies involved knew about the preceding Disney movie or not, but they're both good movies. Um, check them both out. Uh, they're very good. Now, as I mentioned before, I used to just eat up movies like this as well as uh, science shows, uh, on TV, documentaries, yeah, I, yeah, I was that kind of kid. Uh, and eventually, this all led to me becoming interested in ecology and reconstruction of native and even prehistoric habitats. When I became a young adult, I spent a summer in Yellowstone National Park as, well, I was working as a busboy at Canyon Lodge. Well, I'm, on my days off, I would go exploring a lot. Uh, I would go hiking on my own, uh, sometimes with, with friends, uh, and I took a few tours. And being interested in the landscape, I would research what it was like in prehistoric times. I didn't get to see many of the predators in Yellowstone. I did see one of the wolf packs from quite a distance, but I never saw a bear or cougar, and following the birds of prey, uh, birds of prey are my favorite predators, uh, some of my favorite animals, a cougar would have been my second favorite because I love cats, and there, there are very interesting stories of cryptids called phantom cats, which are these supposed sightings of big black cats, uh, panther-like wandering around the forests and plains of Europe and North America, where, which, well, North America has cougars in a few isolated places now, but um, where big cats really don't have territory these days. Um, but these black cats are killing livestock and pets, and these stories have a wide range of potential validity from you know, what people might actually be seeing are just really small cats from a great distance. Um, um, but, uh, but there are some cases where um, big cats ha have escaped from private collections. Um, th there was one on the East Coast some years ago where a mountain lion did kill a, a pit bull in its backyard. Uh, now, of course, big cats used to have territories all over these continents, but in the last few hundred years have been widely extirpated. Um, extirpated is... means extinct in a particular area, in a particular region. Um, so they've been wiped from all but a very few small patches of wilderness. Europe did once have wild lions, and uh, in North America, mountain lions once had a vast range, as did jaguars in the southern states. What's not so well known is that back in the Pleistocene epoch, which is the, t the time span that covers the recent Ice Age cycles, North America did have its own cheetahs. The, the Pleistocene spanned from 2.5 million years ago to about 12,000 years ago. And in this time, what is now the Great Plains grassland of North America were largely 
semi-desert and short grass habitat, very suited to a running pursuit predator. Also known as the American cheetahs, uh, this was the genus Miracinonyx. It consisted of two species, identified from fossils so far, Trumani, which was much like the African cheetah, and Inexpectatus, which was more like a cougar in build. Now let me just take a moment to point out that I do not like the naming of species after uh, after people's names, but uh, Miracinox trumani, that's its, that's its name as of now, so it's what I must call it for now. And uh, Miracinox trumani was the fastest predator of the American Ice Age Plains, and likely the predator that pronghorn antelope, well, actually pronghorn aren't antelope, they're closely related to giraffe and okapi. They're, they're called antelope because uh, they look similar and they have a similar niche in, in the Americas. Uh, but they evolved their great speed, speed to be able to evade uh, Miracinomics. Uh, none of the living North American predators t that exist today are swift enough for the pronghorn to have to run as fast as they can. Uh, the other species, Miracinonyx inexpectatus, again was much more like a modern cougar, more of a power animal than Jumani, and likely hunted bigger game as well. Now, the African cheetahs closest living relatives are, uh, well, th there are two. The cougar, or mountain lion, or catamount, among the many names that that cat has, which, despite being larger than the leopard on average, is not a big cat. It's, it is not a member of the panthera clade, and cannot roar. It is closely related to the smaller cats. Nevertheless, in a fight between a cougar and a leopard, I usually favor the cougar. The other is the jaguarundi, a much smaller cat native to Central and South America. It has been estimated that the cheetah lineage, uh, based on, I believe, fossil evidence and uh, DNA evidence, maybe my mitochondrial DNA, Cheetahs diverged from the Cougar and Jagarundi around six and a half million years ago. Cheetahs originally evolved in North America and later spread to Asia and Africa. Uh, Africa still has cheetah populations, although they're quite threatened now for a number of reasons. Uh, Asia had modern cheetahs until very recently. Miracinomics seems to have either been a branch lineage that emerged from the divergence between cougars and cheetahs, or of the cougar line that evolved to become more cheetah-like. It seems possible then that if, um, that if people wished to reconstruct the American plains to uh, resemble what they were during the Pleistocene, African cheetahs could be introduced as a replacement for Miracinonyx. I think it's more likely to do that than to re-expand the native cougar populations, also considering that cheetahs are considerably less dangerous to humans than cougars. Uh, cheetahs are the gentlest of the large-sized cats uh, by far. Um, th this is largely because they, they don't actually have much in the way of uh, strength or weaponry, a little bit of temperament. Um, cheetahs are very cute, but uh, that doesn't mean they're not dangerous. But, um, but, but anyway, um, Cheetahs would be able to survive rather well in the North American winters. They do in zoos, they do in uh, parks, uh, just so long as they're well fed. Uh, and in North America, they would be under far less threat from 
uh, the competitors that they have in Asia and Africa, such as, uh, well, in Africa, lions and hyenas. Uh, in Asia, tigers and leopards, uh, leopards in Africa too, and uh, wild dogs, although those are, uh, African wild dogs are, are quite rare, and um, uh, wild dogs in Asia, I guess, would be dolls uh, and jackals. And jackals are actually pretty small, they're not much bigger than foxes. Um, But I think it's a project worth considering. Uh, introducing cheetahs to the American Plains and the Great Plains would be a decent habitat for cheetahs. While we can't restore North American wilderness to what it once fully was, perhaps in this way, Mirasononics could effectively make a comeback. <laughs>